So James is going to tell us a story about how he became a Muslim and from that how he became a Christian. Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit about your life before you became a Muslim. Yeah, so, um, so you know, I grew up in kind of a, an atheist household, so yeah. my parents didn't really believe in religion whatsoever. Um, and you know, it's just a standard kind of non-god-like lifestyle really. You know, yeah. Just kind of like lots of partying. And when I got, when I kind of finished university, it was like lots of partying, drugs, alcohol, that kind of stuff. So it was a bit- The whole Western liberal the whole, lifestyle. The whole Western liberal lifestyle basically. And um, I left, I left London at about 25 because I was like, this is getting a bit too much, yeah. basically. And then I, I moved to Oxford, kind of spent a couple of years there um, for my job or whatever. And then that's about the time I found religion. Right. So. so so what was it that, so, I mean, Oxford is obviously the academic centre of, one, one of the academic centres of England. Yeah. Um, what what was it that, that made you start questioning the liberal lifestyle and, and thinking to yourself there's got to be something more to life than this yeah I, I was you know I was kind of thinking about you know the fine-tuning argument right like everything is so finely and well put together that it just seems you know that this can't spawn out of randomness basically yeah and so I started thinking about those types of questions and then I had a bit of like let's say personal adversity in my own life a couple of struggles and I just looked for a greater meaning from that basically so it was more so like I was kind of agnostic I'd say yeah and then yeah just started questioning why does this all exist and yeah and things like that so it was it was personal struggles, personal that, struggles. that made you ask the kind of existential exactly. questions and, exactly. and how is it that Islam ended up on your horizon yeah. say more than Christianity what was it that drew you to Islam initially, yeah. rather than say Christianity or some other religion. Yeah, exactly. So I feel, so when I was actually, um, I was coming back from a bar one night and I jumped into a taxi and there was um, a, a chap there, you, you know, we just started getting talking about religion and things like that. Yeah. And um, he turned off the meter and then he basically told me about Islam for about 40 minutes. Right. And so we had, we had, we had quite a <laughs> about, you know, what Islam is, um, you know why there's a higher power and things like that and then he basically gave me uh, a YouTube uh, list to watch and it was just speakers corner so right. it was like Shamsi and, and the others and I started watching those guys so quite an imaginative taxi <laughs> yeah. Gandhis. Yeah. it's kind of like I've got a prepared list of YouTube channels exactly. to, you to watch and, and, and which which Muslim of the Dawa gang were you watching Shamsi you Shamsi mentioned? mostly <coughs> Shamsi and I think it's EF Dawa as well yeah can I get guy, some water bro that guy um, so it was, it was those two primarily yeah uh, and I was getting all of my sort of theologic like Islam understanding from those videos yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and and so you, you, was, you started watching the Dawa Gandhist here in the park you started watching Shamsi yeah. you, you were learning yeah. what was it that drew you into Islam then yeah so <coughs> You know, I was kind of convinced that there is, you know, we're not here by choice or by, well, by randomness. And so I just, what I, I, it was my first introduction to religion. And I mm. guess I got, I now know I got carried away with it and I didn't do my research properly. Yeah. You know, I started going to Jummah prayer on Fridays. Yeah. I felt a really nice, strong sense of community, which the Muslims do really well. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. They do that really well. Yeah. Um, and started watching more videos. And a lot of the videos I'd watch from Speaker's Corner are, you know, obviously coming from one side. Yeah. So the, you know, I guess they only publish the good videos, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, if you beat them in a debate, yeah. that, that that video will not appear on exactly, their channels. Exactly, exactly. So it was mostly, I was looking at it from that angle. I was, you know, I was, I was like, okay, yeah. this must be the right path forward because they're always right. And yeah, they yeah, They have very convincing <clears throat> arguments, basically. Yeah. Um, and I started reading the text. Um, I read the Quran. And, yeah. and, you know, there are some nice parts of the Quran. Yeah, so yeah, I thought, yeah. Well, some yeah. beautiful messaging in there. Yeah. And that just aligned personally with me. I just thought, okay, it's got really good messaging. I mean, I'm half Turkish. I come from a Turkish background. So okay. Some of my family are like, right. you know, Muslim. So, <coughs> so in other words, a full Muslim. European who got kidnapped basically, in the past. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. And, and, and so how long was that process of investigation, watching videos, yeah. reading about the Quran, yeah. going to Jummah prayers yeah. on a Friday? How long was that going on yeah. before you took your Shahada? So it was about half a year, um, and it was quite an intense period as well. So I, you know, I'd read, I read the Quran first. Yeah. I started reading parts of Hadith, and I started watching a lot of Speakers Corner. And yeah. 
then I turned my shahada in the in the mosque in Oxford. Right, and yeah, to, yeah. to many a cry of Allahu Akbar, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right, and and so you became a Muslim. Yeah. Um, how how what was your life like uh, as a Muslim? Do you want to describe that yeah, to us? Yeah, I'm just going to be. Be, yeah, just be, be like, purely honest um, and, and, and yeah, tell the yeah. truth. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking for any kind no, of distortion no, no. in any direction. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, <coughs> so initially it was like really exciting. You know, I found God. I was drawing closer to God, at least that's what I thought. Yeah. And then after about two, three months of sort of, you know, practicing, I just started hating myself, to be honest. I, I couldn't do the five pray daily prayers. Yeah. I'd miss a prayer. I would go see, you know, an imam, and they would say, "Well, you have to do wudu this way. If you don't do it this way, your prayer isn't validated, so it starts making you feel a certain way." Yeah. So I actually, after about three months of practicing, however long it was, I just I felt worse. Yeah. Um, and the heavy burden of of a yeah, ritualism. Just, personally, I just couldn't do it. it, it, it yeah. Like all, all the rules and everything, and and it was just it was just too much for me, basically. Yeah. So like what? what sorry, we're doing our own conversation. That's Ignore this guy, now. brother. Yeah, yeah. This no, guy, this guy's a troll yeah. and a heckler. <laughs> Who, yeah, whenever I challenge him to a debate, yeah, he yeah. never, he never does a debate. He just oh, yeah, heckles yeah, yeah. from. So let's let's keep let's keep. This is what I warned yeah, you about. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, stay yeah, focused. Yeah, yeah. They're just they're just triggered. Yeah. They're just triggered. Yeah. They're secular yeah. humanists who can't defend secular humanism, and they get triggered every time they're challenged by me. So anyway, carrying on. So what in terms of what what in terms of the ritualism and uh, uh, and Islam was hurting you in terms of making you self-loathing was it just the sheer complexity of it was it the disagreements of it or was it just the fact that you personally couldn't be disciplined enough to keep them what what, what was the dynamic going on I, I feel like discipline was one part so I don't think I was disciplined enough to keep up with all the rituals like yeah. the daily prayers but for instance when you would go to like drummer prayer and they would do the kutba and a lot of it I found it was just for me anyway everyone's different they put a lot of pressure on me like yeah. you know, are you ready for the grave and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I fucked up like 20 times this week. Like, right. you know, and yeah, yeah. eventually you just you just implode under all the pressure. Right. That's, that's, how, that's what I found myself doing. Really. Yeah. 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 What? What? Um, in terms of how, how deep did the Arabization go? Did you end up with an Arab name? How, how much Arabic did you manage to learn in the nine months? Yeah. So I actually learned Tajweed, and yeah. I took a course at Oxford so I could re recite the Quran in Arabic. I couldn't understand it in Arabic. Yeah. But I could do the recitation course. Okay. So I took it very seriously. Like I was really trying to get closer to God and, yeah. and things like that. And yeah, I mean, they offered me an Arabic name when yeah. I did my shahada. I, just, yeah. I decided to keep my own. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. so, what was it that? Put, how, how is it then that you you started? How, how did Christianity arrive on your horizon? Yeah. What was it? What, what was it that first made you take note of Christianity as a yeah. possible alternative to Islam? Yeah. So I remember at, there was a point at which I realised it was. I read some hadiths. I read some passages. Some, some points that I just it didn't bode well with me. Yeah. And it was like the final like straw that broke the camel's which, back. Which which passages were these? Yeah. So so the first one was um, well. First, I came across the, the marriage to Aisha, yeah. and that just it didn't bode well with me. I tried looking at scholarly explanations, even though there's uh, scholarly explanations of it. Yeah. I just couldn't convince myself that this is something that a prophet who is chosen by all mankind can yeah. engage in. That was my opinion. Um, and then I saw a passage which said something like, if a woman doesn't come to bed with her man, yeah. the angels will curse her in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, are you familiar yeah, with Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a woman so, refuses to have sex with her husband, yeah, she exactly. gets cursed. Yeah. by the angels exactly and yeah. there was another there was a bunch of them and i tried looking up scholarly explanations of it and it just wasn't convincing enough right and i coupled that with how i felt in the religion yeah and then from there basically i prayed in the shower i was like look go on my knees i was like if there's a god if there's any god reveal yourself yeah i give you to I, I, I'm, I'm lost yeah and two days later i got a handwritten letter through the door oh wow that was basically saying dear neighbor jesus christ is your lord and savior yeah you should basically shoot him and you know it had like he died for our sins and things like that so I took that as a sign, yeah. and I decided to pursue the Christian faith thereafter. So, uh, when you said you did, what, was it as instant as that? Was it like that day you read that letter and you decided, right, now I'm not a Muslim, I am a Christian, Got or it. was there sort of a transitional phase where you started investigating Christianity while still practicing Islam? So at that point, I decided to leave Islam. On um, that day? On that day, basically. Right. Yeah. And I went uh, kind of investigated Christianity and I was a bit more cautious this time because I felt with Islam what I did is I jumped straight into it and I didn't do my research yeah so with Christianity I went on you know I started off with um, 
you know, Anglican churches. I yeah. did the Alpha course. Yeah. I spoke to, you know, you know uh, Christians there. Yeah. And then I investigated the Catholic church thereafter. And right. I went from there, basically. And, and, and so what was the thing that finally clinched it for you in terms of commitment to Christ and, yeah. and following Jesus? Yeah, so I... I I, I remember at the end of the Alpha course that I was doing, um, we, we all prayed together. Yeah. And uh, as we prayed, I felt like just a feeling of euphoria. Yeah. Like all this stress went. And I think at that point, just in my heart, I knew it was for me and it was something that I wanted to follow this. Yeah, because yeah. cr- one, of, one of Christ's teachings is, you know, come to me, though you who are heavy laden mm. and, and are weary and heavy burdened, mm. and, and I will give you rest and you will find you know, peace for your souls, take upon my yoke for yourselves yeah. uh, and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light mm. and you will find rest for your souls. Mm. And it seems to me like you had that experience, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that it was my videos that mm-hmm. helped you become a Christian. Yeah. And I, I'm just, I'm not it just was. saying that for the camera, he did literally tell me that over yeah. there. So what was, what, what videos was it and how did that, impact you in terms of like yeah. so it's basically when i was kind of watching a lot of like shamsi around that time I, I saw him debating you yeah and then from that point onwards i started basically watching yourself and there's another chap as well and then i started seeing the the arguments for the other side so mm. I, like i said with speaker's corner when you watch one particular faith group islamic yeah you're only going to get the good videos from the islamic group or let's say yeah. the other group and so i started watching the counter arguments to a lot of things and yeah from there, I was like, okay, I'm building up my evidence base here. Yeah. It gave me the confidence that I needed to basically have a bit more faith. In Thanks be to God. And how long have you been a Christian now? Uh, I'd say probably about six months now. Six months. Six months. And what's your life like as a Christian? Uh, I, feel, I feel liberated, to be honest. Yeah. Because I don't have... I, I mean, I believe in works. I yeah. believe you have to do works. Like yeah. works and faith go hand in hand. At least yeah. that's, um, but I feel a lot less pressured, a lot less stressed. And I feel like... The Bible itself has a lot of you know, beautiful messages. So, for yeah. instance, like a lot of what St. Paul's St. Paul writes to the is it Corinthians, yeah. and you know, I'm still learning about love and how it is and all that, all, all yeah. these types of beautiful messages. So, try and implement all, all of my own life, and yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, all Christians believe in works. We just don't believe in works unto salvation. Yeah. So we're we're saved as a gift and a grace of God, yeah. and then our works are an adornment to the salvation we received as a gift. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like. If I was a multi-billionaire and you were in debt that you couldn't pay and I paid off your debt and then set you up for life yeah. in a million pound mansion with a million pound every month to look after yourself, yeah, yeah. there's nothing you could give me as a multi-billionaire that I couldn't buy for myself. Yeah. But you would want to show your gratitude through other kinds of tokens. Yeah. You might invite me over for a meal and cook it yourself and your kids might write me a thank you card and draw me a really rubbish picture, there, but it's really sweet because they give it you and then you stick it on the fridge, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. That's what our works are to God. Yeah. They're tokens of our humility and our gratitude for the salvation that he's given to us as a gift. So as a new Christian, are, are there any questions that I can help you with or anything you want to ask that we can talk about? Um, you know. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, I've just kind of been reading the Bible and, and just kind of going through it in my own sort of time. I think I'm okay. I think, you know, yep. my, my local church has done a good job of guiding me. I, I feel pretty sad. I come down here on the, on, on the weekends to try and see you know, yeah, yeah. myself a little bit. But yeah, no, good. Brilliant. Well, yeah. peace be with you, brother. Peace Welcome you to too. the family. Thanks good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank Victor you so much. Christian, shall we welcome him back to the, to the family? <laughs> and, it, and, it just go, and it just goes to show, guys, that the evangelism that we're doing in the park really does have an impact. And it really is working. You've got the living proof right there, stood right in front of you. And, and, the, and he actually exemplifies the reason why all the Dawagandists refuse to debate me now. Because every time that we've debated them, it costs them converts. You know, it was my debates with Shamsi that helped this brother to become a Christian. And this is why the Dawagandists no longer debate me in the park. Because each time we get a video out where are we defeating their arguments, it's costing them converts. And he's just one of a list of brothers who've returned to the faith or become Christian or not taken their shahada because of the, the efforts that we're doing in this park. So, you know, there, there's the proof of it.